Hey, what's up print hustlers? Today I'm at the shop to talk about screen mesh and screen selection. So we're gonna go over all the different points about what the screens are, how they work, and how to actually choose the right mesh for the job. We're also going to include a cheat sheet down below in the description. So be sure to grab that link. You can print that out and have it at the shop too. So the first thing I wanna talk about with screens is that you're gonna see a lot of times different colored mesh. This one's white, this one is yellow. Now, the difference between those is gonna be, well, sometimes you can only buy yellow. Oftentimes you'll see higher mesh counts. So usually once you hit like the 196s, 200s and up, you're traditionally going to see mostly yellow mesh. Lower mesh counts, you'll see a lot of white mesh. Now, that makes a difference in the exposure process. The white mesh kind of acts like a fiber optic. It carries the light in and actually speeds up the exposure time. So on your lower mesh counts that traditionally have a thicker yield of emulsion, it's gonna help it speed up that process, otherwise it might take too long to expose. Where yellow mesh is going to absorb that light and not refract it so much, not allowing it to spread and risk actually closing up your fine line detail. So that's why there's a difference between yellow and white. So next, let's talk about what the actual mesh number means. So this one is a used screen. We can see some old ghost imaging, some hazing happening, it's okay. Up in the corner, hard to see, it says 156. So what that is saying is that this screen, in every one inch by one inch area, there's 156 openings. So this is really a woven mesh. So it's actually gonna be like knuckle over knuckle and making a mesh opening. So it's saying there's 156 of those individual openings in a one by one area. So traditionally you'll see a lot of 110, 156, 196, 230, 280, 305, 355. It can go up, it can go way higher when you get into some high-end uh, graphic printing. So what you wanna do is determine which actual mesh is best for what you're doing. Something like this, the Printavo words, I could do it on a 110, I could do it on 156. There's not a lot of detail. Anything that has not a lot of detail, that's pretty solid, usually you can do in a lower mesh. 110 is a very popular one. I'm seeing a lot more people go to thin thread mesh, which the difference between thin thread and regular mesh is what it sounds like the thread is actually thinner. So if we see a traditional mesh, think of it being about a thumb size, right? But much smaller versus a thin thread, it's gonna be this pinky size. So if I have thumbs making openings, the opening might be smaller, same amount of openings, but a smaller opening. Where if it's the size of my pinky, it's actually gonna allow for a more open area to lay down a better vertical deposit, not having to stack that to build it up. So that's where thin thread meshes are becoming very popular and oftentimes replacing the 110 a lot of 135 thin thread or 140 thin thread is really taking over the marketplace now. So how do you know which mesh to use for your job? There is a rule of thumb to help out. It's called the one fifth rule. Now, technically it can also be the one fourth rule, but that's semantics. What you need to do is look at your output for your film. Is it low detail? If it's low detail, don't worry so much. Put it on a 135, 140, a 156, just go ahead and print it. If it has fine lines, half tones, high detail, what are you outputting that at? What's your LPI? And you're gonna take that and you're gonna figure out, okay, I need to multiply it by what amount, right? So if your LPI is 55, multiply it by five, and that gets you where you need to be. You can also multiply by four, it does work with today's modern emulsion. So multiply by four, you're looking around 230 mesh, that's the right option. 65, you're gonna keep going up, 75, continue to go up. So again, the one fifth rule or the one fourth rule will help put you in the right place. But if you've got solid direct deposit area like this, don't worry so much about the ink. Just make sure you're not uh, putting it down too high of a mesh count because white through a high mesh count, you're gonna be hurting your arms a little bit, right? If you're not on auto. So choose the correct one. For more tips and tricks, be sure to download that guide below. If you have any tips or tricks, leave them in the comments below. Let us know, share with the community. Be sure to like, subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks so much. See you soon.